Hey pilots, welcome to my first impressions video of the brand new Cola map inside of DCS World. This map just launched in early access and is creating a lot of buzz and even some skepticism. It's developed by the Orbix team, which are more commonly known for their exceptional flight simulator terrains and airports. Before we jump in, a quick note. My opinions in this video are completely my own. I wasn't asked to create this video, and I wasn't given this map as a content creator for early access. I bought it just like many of you watching. To be honest, I was skeptical at first, and I watched several live streams to make sure it was something I truly wanted to invest in. And I'm sure many of you are in the same boat. So my goal today is to provide some insight on this newly released Cola map. There's a lot to uncover and discuss about the Cola map. So let's address some of the common questions and explore what it brings to the table in early access. So what exactly is the Kola Peninsula map? The Kola map introduces a refreshing change from the desert maps we have grown accustomed to inside of DCS World. This map encompasses the northern parts of Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia, offering a stunning Arctic Circle landscape. Its initial focus is on the Finland-Russian border and features satellite ortho imagery, a specialty of Orbix known from their other products. Visually, the map impresses from high and medium altitudes, though detail quality can vary depending on your flight path. Flying low to the ground, which is a lot of fun on this map, you may experience a loss of detail and textures that do not blend well together. The Kola map showcases remarkable natural landmarks, including the Norwegian fjords, intricate coastlines, snowfields, forests, wetlands, vast lake systems, and major rivers. It's important to note the map's massive size, requiring 145 gigabytes of storage, covering around 575,000 square kilometers of land and 1.3 million square kilometers in total. It ranks as one of the largest and most resource intensive maps in DCS, alongside the South Atlantic map. For comparison, the Syria map encompasses 450,000 square kilometers and takes up 63 gigabytes of space. In another simulator, X-Plane 11's Florida HD textures span 170,000 square kilometers and demand around 126 gigabytes of storage. So how much does the Cola map cost? During its early access period, the Cola map is priced at $55.99. When the map exits early access, the cost will rise to $69.99, making it about $10 more expensive than the popular Syria map. However, the Kola map's larger size and scope could justify its higher price point. What's on the horizon for the Kola map? Expect a complete set of winter textures that adjust dynamically with mission date, authentically capturing the cold, harsh climate of the Kola region. Additionally, enhancements to landscape features and detail, along with expanded high resolution aerial ortho imagery will further enrich the map's immersive experience. There will also be military installations like naval and army bases, barracks, ports, storage areas, training areas, ranges, radar and communication sites, and air defense sites. Orbix also has planned for additional Cold War Swedish and Finland road runways. How is the Kola map's performance? The Kola map delivers exceptional performance with minimal stutters even during low-level flights. While this smooth experience may be partially attributed to its streamlined asset usage and varied quality in certain areas, it remains a standout in terms of performance. Using my NVIDIA 4090 on max graphics at 2K resolution, I typically maintain an average of 100 to 140 frames per second over Cola's most detailed regions. In comparison, the Kola's map performance marks a significant improvement from when the popular Syria map first launched. For those new to DCS World, the Syria map was initially faced with numerous performance issues leading to frequent stutters that impacted gameplay. In contrast, Kola's smoother, more consistent experience enhances its appeal. What do I like about the Kola map? The Kola map brings a refreshing change of scenery with its lush green landscapes providing a stark contrast to the desert maps that we've become accustomed to. This vibrant setting adds a breath of fresh air to the gameplay, making flights feel more dynamic and immersive. One of the standout features of the Kola map is its exceptional performance. The high resolution areas are visually stunning, particularly when you're flying at medium to high altitudes. 
Even when flying low over certain parts of the map, you can still enjoy breathtaking views of tundras and lakes. Another aspect I appreciate is the attention to detail in the map's towns and settlements. In areas of Norway, Finland, and Sweden, you can see colorful buildings dotting the landscape, which adds a cheerful touch to your flights. Meanwhile, towns in Russia feature more utilitarian, block-style apartments in muted colors, providing an authentic feel of the region's architectural styles. My favorite area to fly over is the fjords, and I believe this will become one of the favorites of all DCS players because of the vast terrain and detail. I've flown several missions down low with some of my friends and we have really enjoyed the scenery the Kola map has to offer while we are on our way to bomb our targets. Overall, the Kola map's diverse landscapes, excellent performance, and thoughtful design elements create a truly engaging experience. What don't I like about the Kola map? First and foremost, the fact that the map is still in early access is a major drawback. Only about a quarter of the map is considered complete, and it shows when flying at low altitudes. In some areas, the map textures look subpar, making the experience less immersive. Additionally, the way rivers and lakes blend with the surrounding environment, and certain low-resolution areas feels off. Another issue is the significant disk space required to install the map, which comes in at a hefty 145 gigabytes. I was also disappointed to learn that the winter textures weren't included in the early access release. Given the map's arctic setting, I expected winter textures to be a part of the initial launch. The tree placement and selection are another aspect that puzzled me. Instead of using the conifer trees native to the region, Orbix opted for other tree types to save on performance. This decision leads to a disconnect from the actual environment, as I noticed tropical looking trees in parts of Russia. Lastly, the textures at the airport could use improvement. Many airfields lack detail and feel uninspiring with some bunkers actually having grass and trees growing inside of them. While these issues might be acceptable to some, I expected better from Orbix, a team known for their expertise in flight simulation, particularly with airports. Nonetheless, I believe they have the potential to significantly enhance the map's quality as they continue to work on it. So what's my final verdict on the Cola map? The Cola map is a refreshing addition to the DCS World community, introducing lush green landscapes and captivating terrains that contrasts sharply with the desert maps we've grown accustomed to. The map's breathtaking mountains and thousands of lakes create a stunning visual experience, especially when flying high and taking in the impressive scenery Orbix has crafted. The potential for Cold War scenarios pitting Russia against the West adds an exciting layer to the gameplay. While there is room for improvement in the low resolution areas, particularly given in the map's expansive size, I believe the overall experience is promising. If you decide to purchase the Cola map, you will likely be pleased with its performance and the opportunity to explore unique scenarios not available in other maps. The map's potential is bolstered by Orbic's reputation as a top-notch developer of terrain and airports. Additionally, campaign creators like Baltic Dragon and Reflected Simulations are set to develop future campaigns for the Cola map, adding more depth and replayability. I hope you have found my preview of the Cola map insightful if you've already purchased the map, I'd love to hear about your experiences with it, and I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.